In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to use the effective rate of interest method for amortizing a bond. And it'll, in this example, it'll be a bond issued at a discount. So I have it laid out in T-account form here. We've got the assets and liabilities shown over here on this side of the balance sheet. And then uh, the interest expense here for the bond, which is part of net income on the income statement shown over here. So let's look at our example. We issued a bond here with a $100,000 face value uh, for uh, at a stated rate of interest of 9%. So we credit the bonds payable for that amount. Then over here, uh, in our cash account, we received only $96,150 for that bond when we issued it. So we debit cash for that amount. Now, this $96,150 is based on discounting that uh, bond uh, maturity value or face value back here at a market rate of interest of 10%. So we need a balancing entry here between our cash account and our bonds payable account. So what we do here is we set up this bond, discount the bonds payable, which is a contra account here to bonds payable in this case. And we would debit it for the difference here of $3,850. So you look at our debit balance here of $3,850 with our debit balance here to cash of $96,150 and it balances here with our credit balance here of a bonds payable of $100,000. So what we're going to do here is we're going to amortize this discount of bonds payable down to here to a zero balance. So at the maturity date of the bond, the bond payable carrying value will be $100,000. We're also going to look here at it, the interest payable on this bond, and those are those semi-annual interest payments that we pay to our bondholders. And those are based on the uh, stated rate of interest on the bond. In this case, it would be semi-annual uh, payments of, uh, in, uh, we've got a five-year bond, we'd have 10 payments here, and it'd be at 4.5% interest per payment times that $100,000 face value, so you got a $4,500 payment here. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to recognize our interest expense on that bond. And those are going to be on uh, the same uh, for each period that that bond is uh, paying those interest payments. We're going to recognize the interest expense portion. And that's based on a market rate of interest. In this case, it was 10% times the bond's carrying value. Okay, using the effective rate of interest method, we'll amortize the discount here in this bonds payable. Now remember this discount, the bonds payable, is a balancing account here between the cash account and the bonds payable account. And it's also a balancing account here between the interest payable, those are the semi-annual interest payments made to our bondholders each period, and the interest expense that we recognize on that bond each period, which is part of net income on the income statement. So let's go in and look at our calculations. Here we have a $4,500 payment to our bondholders. Now that's based on a 9% interest rate per year and uh, if we're looking here at a semi-annual payment we divide that by two and get four and a half percent. And then you take that four and a half percent times a hundred thousand dollars face value of bond and you get a $4,500 uh, payment here. Then we go and we calculate our interest expense uh, that we recognized here. And that's based on a 10% uh, of in interest rate of the market rate of interest of 10% and you divide that by 2 to get a 5% interest rate per period. Now you take that uh, market rate of interest here times the uh, carrying value of the bond here. Now we started out with uh, $96,150 because that was what we received for that bond when we issued it. Now you multiply those out and you get a $4,807. That's the amount of interest expense we recognized on the bond here. Now taking the difference between the payment amount that we paid on that bond uh, of $4,500 and the recognized interest amount here of $4,807, we get the difference here of $307. Now that's the amorti amortizing the discount here on that bonds payable. So we take that uh, uh, amortize discount amount here and add it to the carrying value of the bond $96,150 and we get a new carrying value of $96,456. So just proceeding on here with and continuing with the same type of calculations we have the $4,500 payment to the uh, bondholders. We calculate our new 
interest expense here at $4,823. Taking the difference between them, we get the uh, discount or amortized discount here of $323. So you add that to the $96,456 and, uh, and you get a new carrying value here of $96 thousand seven hundred and seventy nine dollars so we continue on with our calculations here until we amortize that total discount amount down here of thirty eight hundred and fifty dollars so we have a zero balance here in that discount uh, uh, to the bonds payable that discount account and then looking here we had a uh, 45, total of forty five thousand dollar payments to the bondholders and we recognized on our uh, as interest expense on our income statement here of $48,850 total. So just taking the difference there, you can see that we come up with the uh, amortized uh, discount amount here of $3,850. And that uh, leaves our face value of the, or our face value or the bond at new carrying value of $100,000, which equals its face value. Okay, let's review what we have done here. We've amortized our discount on bonds payable down here to a zero balance. And by amortizing that discount on bonds payable down to a zero balance here, we've increased the book value of the, or the carrying value of the bond by that discount amount each period. So we started out here at the $96,150 carrying value on that bond and we ended up here in the last period or at its maturity date of $100,000 of the book value, which uh, equals its uh, face value of $100,000. So look at, let's look here at this discount the bonds payable as a balancing entry between the interest payable and the interest expense. So taking the first period here, uh, we had a discount amount of $307 or a credit of $307. And then we would add that to our interest payable credit here of $4,500. That's the payment to the bondholders. And we would add the $307 plus the $4,500 credit here. And we get a debit here to interest expense of $4,807. So the debits on the interest expense of $4,807 balance with the credit here of interest payable of $4,500 plus the credit here of $307. So looking at our int uh, discount the bonds payable, the credits here uh, plus the credits in our interest payable accounts balance with the interest expense accounts. So at the end here we have a total of forty eight thousand eight hundred and fifty dollar debit amount here in our interest expense and then that balances with the interest payable here of forty five thousand dollars plus the thirty eight hundred and fifty dollar credit here in the discount the bonds payable so at the uh, each period we have to reduce this discount uh, interest payable amount here by forty five hundred dollars which uh, reduces our cash here by $4,500. A credit here to cash of $4,500 for the debit here and interest payable of $4,500. That's the payment to the bondholders. And then when the bond becomes mature, we reduce our bonds payable account here or debit it for $100,000. And then we would credit our cash or decrease our cash by $100,000. So just reviewing here, this we looked at how this discount to bonds payable is a balancing account between our cash account and our bonds payable. And it's also a balancing account between the interest payable to our bondholders and the interest expense that we recognize each period on that uh, bond.